Lunasar is celebrated on the 8th full moon after the winter solstice at the beginning of August. It is the second last festival of the Wheel of the Year and the first of three harvest festivals, Lunasa, Marbon and Sowen, and therefore marks the transition into the fall season. Lamas is the ancient Christian name for this festival and Lunasa the older Celtic name. When August comes around, I always feel as if Mother Nature has painted over the landscape with delicate brush strokes. Red poppies or snow white daisies peek out from between the golden color of the grain. And when a warm wind blows through the fields, these fields turn into soft golden waves. But this time of the year not only offers a magical sight for the eyes, our other senses are equally captivated. The hum of crickets serenading the evening, the wind that blows through the ears of corn, the intense air just before a summer thunderstorm, and the smell of the earth after a warm summer rain. The grain that was sown a few months earlier is now fully ripe and can be harvested. And I love the color of wheat or corn in summer because to me it shows so clearly that all these plants have been absorbing the light of the sun until now. It is the climax for the abundance in nature and our ancestors were already preparing for the approaching darker months by preserving fruit or making jam, pickling vegetables or drying medicinal herbs for the winter. If you look at the fields from a distance, they look like green and golden puzzle pieces that make up a large patchwork of Mother Nature. There you can see the farmers being busy like the bees on their fields. Here in Germany, many cornfields have been harvested in many places already and the remaining wheat stalks glow in a rich gold in the evening sunlight. So, how can you celebrate Lunasa? Here are some simple ways how you can harvest this magnificent energy of the year. And please remember that you don't have to do a lot of things to celebrate Lunasa or any Sabbath from the Wheel of the Year, really. I personally love doing smaller and more simpler rituals and in general less but I really tune in and see what resonates for me this specific year and for the specific Sabbath. So if you have a garden, now is the perfect time to harvest the fruits and vegetables and berries and herbs that have been growing in your garden over the past few months and all the things that have been absorbing the light of the sun. And in my opinion, you can truly taste the difference of vegetables and fruits and berries that you have been grown on your own and that are not bought from the supermarket. So I really truly love harvesting the fruits that have been growing in my garden or in my parents' garden and just really enjoy the process of really harvesting the ripe fruits of the past few months. So for us in Germany, it is now usually the time where raspberries are ripe or cherries or plums or mirabel plums and now they are ripe and can be harvested. And as I said, if you don't have a garden, you can go to your local farmer's market and buy the fruits and vegetables there. So to me, now it is really important to really focus on the food that is in season right now. And I think in general, this is my favorite way to celebrate Lamas, to really take the time and take a look around and see what is growing, what is ripe in my area right now, what is in season right now. And I once heard that our bodies are genetically used to the foods that are growing in our region. So for example, in Germany, we have a lot of apples and pears and cherries and potatoes, all that kind of things. But our bodies are not really 
adapted to all the pineapples that you can buy even though you can't buy them in these amounts that are presented in the supermarket and this is not me giving you any health advice this is also not me telling you how your diet should look like this is just something that i read and it honestly truly made sense to me and i think there is just something so magical to live in alignment with the seasons and the food that your region has to offer and i personally have a little calendar in my kitchen on my fridge that tells me all the foods that are in season in germany for the different times of the year and this is just how i keep track of yeah the food that i can eat in the seasons so yeah i think this is my favorite way to honor the time of the first harvest so what i remember about this time of the year is my mother and all my neighbors making jams and exchanging the different types of jams like for example my mother would make raspberry jam my neighbor would make plum jam and they would just exchange and you would have the most delicious jam for basically the rest of your life but this is something that you can do if you are a little bit of a kitchen witch you love being in the kitchen or just making your own foods then it's really to make the foods and things that you harvested durable for the winter so making jams making pickled vegetables or drying herbs that you harvested from your garden for the winter months so you probably heard about llamas and its connection to bread and it was and still is in many areas the tradition to bake a loaf of bread from the first grain harvested so this is probably the most recommended thing that you will find when you kind of research what to do for llamas how to celebrate llamas and yeah i personally love doing it i love baking bread and put it on my altar make it as a little offering so yeah this is another thing that you could do for llamas if you like to bake bread so of course you can also make a llamas altar and i love decorating my altars for the different times of the years and you really want to think about i always say that of the colors and the symbolism that you will find in nature outside so think about colors that are related to harvesting like light browns gold orange and yellow these are the things that you see everywhere right now you can decorate your altar with baskets that are filled with bread or grains or something like that and also sunflowers are really something that i connect to this time of the year that i connect to lunasa and for me also crystal quartz is the perfect crystal to use because it really represents this fiery energy that is present around this time of the year you can also make little corn dolls and what i love to do is going to the fields after it was harvested and just see what's left there and please don't cut down anything from the fields and as i said just go there see what's left maybe ask a farmer if they have something left and then use that because that's how it was traditionally made and yeah this is what i love doing and if you want to work with dds maybe you have been called to work with dds then this is something that you can do of course as well and the dds that are connected to lamas or lunasa are lu demeta and persephone and also odin and loki or ceres so these are just a few and of course do your own research and see what resonates with you now another thing that you could do to celebrate lamas or lunasa and i have not read this anywhere else and i really wonder why is to help out your friends or family or your local farmers with the harvest and i personally have some friends that own little farms and i already asked them if i could help because i think it is so interesting to just experience the work that is like needed to produce the food that we casually eat because we don't have to do the work anymore we go to the supermarket we buy the food and we don't really think about what work is needed and is put into the food that again we casually can buy in the supermarket so i feel like we became so detached from the work our ancestors did 
and we really forgot that it needs hard work to yeah eat and have food and I really wanted to connect with this old way of living and I really try my best to connect to the old ways of living as much as I can. So I think this is really a cool idea to celebrate llamas and to really honor the food even more that you are eating. So yeah, I don't know, I love this. And from my experience, the old people are more than eager to tell you all their wisdom and knowledge and to teach you because they know that the knowledge is getting lost more and more. So yeah, maybe ask friends if they can accompany you if you want to help a local farmer that maybe you are not that familiar with or you don't know the person that you want to help with. Always be safe and yeah, again, maybe ask someone if they can go with you. But there is more to understand this time quality of Lamas and Lunasa. It's not only about the external harvest to understand Lamas and Lunasa, because if you think about it, the power of the sun not only brings life and nourishment, it can also destroy. And around this time of the year, we can now also experience the scorching and deadly side of the previously life-giving sun. So this time of the year not only is the time to celebrate all that nature has to offer, it also is a time where we have to slow down. And if you are a witch like me and you just love autumn and the cooler months of the year, then anyway, you don't want to spend too much time outside in the heat right now. But what I invite you to do is to really take the time and reflect right now. Because if you think about it, now is the time where the grain needs to be cut, it needs to be stored for winter, for the darker months of the year. So this time really is crucial. Until this first harvest, it was all about watching the fruit that had been sown grow and ripen. So it really was about waiting and growing and ripening. But now is the time to really take a clear action. Because if you cut the grain too early, it may not be fully ripe. But if you wait only a little bit and it's too late, then chances are high that the rain or a thunderstorm will cause the grain to fail and damage it. So you can ask yourself, what do I want to take with me into the winter months that deeply nourishes myself, physically, mentally and magically, and what do I leave behind with this harvest? What needs a clear cut in my life? Where do I need to draw a line? Do you feel somehow tied to a bad habit or a situation? This can also mean that an emotion is draining you energetically. So grab your pen and journal and just sit down and write everything down that comes to your mind. If this is something that resonates with you, you can also consider doing a cord cutting ritual to severe these ties and this is how you can do it. First, prepare yourself for the ritual. This can and should include drawing a protective circle around your working space, doing a short meditation to calm your mind down, cleansing yourself and your working space and whatever you need to do to prepare your work. Now take two black candles and place them in candle holders. I love using smaller candles because that way I can watch them burn down completely. Now place the candles a couple of centimeters away from each other on a fireproof tray. Connect the candles with a cotton thread and focus on one of the candles with the intention that this candle represents you. The other candle represents the habit, emotion or situation you are separating yourself from. You can also carve words, sigils or symbols that represent the emotion or situation you want to see via ties from into the candle. Now light the candles and confidently say out loud your spell. And this could be something like, and while I watch the candles burn, I see the flames and lessons learned. I cut all ties and release what no longer serves me as I will it, so mode it be. 
So what I love doing when I do cord cutting rituals is something that I learned in my womb practitioner's training and it is to also energetically remove any cords that are kind of connected to the energy that I want to release and when I did this the first time it was a little bit uncomfortable it feels weird because it's literally like you are plugging out an electronic cable from your body kind of I don't know let me know if you do this how it feels for you but yeah this is something that I really love doing because that way I make sure I'm calling in the energy to myself and I'm separating myself from the energies so while you are watching the candles burn down and you can see the flames cutting the cords really get into a meditative state feel into your body and see if there are any places or parts of your body where you can feel these energetical cords and then go ahead and pluck them out and to me I can really feel the detachment from the habits, the situations, the emotions and also the empowerment that comes with it while I call my energy back and yeah I feel ready or more ready to move on from this but just a quick disclaimer please be safe when you do this and if you are in a dangerous situation don't rely on the cord cutting rituals if it's is a person that you want to see weird ties from please get help and call out to authorities or people you can trust if you need help just putting that in there because i want you to be safe always so another beautiful way to celebrate lamas or lunasa and to really get familiar with this time quality is to ask yourself what can i harvest that I've sown over the past few months. What is ripe in my life right now to be harvested? And how can I enjoy my harvest right now and really celebrate myself for it? Because I feel like we always try to achieve more. We always try to manifest more. And as witches, we try to do more rituals and spells to manifest more of this good stuff into our lives. And yeah, we really simply forget to celebrate us for everything that we can harvest right now in this present moment, no matter how big or small it is. So I really invite you to make a little picnic, to have a feast with your family, eat regional seasonal food and take days off, go somewhere nice and find ways how you can celebrate yourself for everything that you can harvest right now, for everything that you did over the past few months and again no matter how small this harvest or achievement may seem to you, go and celebrate yourself queen. Just, just dropping that in here. You may already notice the pseudal changes in the air and the gradual shift in the energy around you. The days are getting shorter, the nights a bit cooler and there's a sense of transition all around you. This time of the year we are reminded to prepare for the coming autumn and winter months. So whether you choose to harvest fruits, bake bread or perform a cord cutting ritual, remember that Lunasa is a time of reflection, gratitude and preparation for the darker months ahead. It's a time to honor the abundance that surrounds us, to give thanks for the fruits of our labor and to make mindful decisions about what we want to carry forward into the next season of our lives. So take a moment to reflect on your journey so far. What have you achieved? What lessons have you learned and what challenges have you overcome? This is a time to celebrate. Acknowledge your hard work and the progress you've made. Just like the farmers that after the harvest, after making the hay and storing everything, can take some time and proudly look at their work and be relieved for they are nearly set for winter. Lunasa is not just about physical harvest, but also about the spiritual and emotional harvest. It's about recognizing the growth within ourselves and appreciating the journey you've undertaken. 
So as you celebrate Lamas this year, however that looks like for you, really think about the personal growth that you've experienced and the wisdom that you have gained. Engage in activities that really truly bring you joy. Whether this is spending time with loved ones, engaging in your creative pursuits or simply taking some time for self-care. So I really hope you enjoyed this little witch's guide to llamas. I hope it helps you to understand the quality of this time of the year a little bit better. And let me know how you are going to celebrate llamas this year, if you are celebrating. And if you like this video, if you like my content, then don't forget to do the YouTube magic. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it, comment down below. And I also have a whole playlist about the wheel of the year. So you can go ahead and binge watch that right here. And yeah, we will hang out again next week. So see you then. Bye bye. <laughs>